Hello YouTubers, Groovers and Producers. Welcome back to Groove Mechanics Techno Tricks. Uh, after a bit of a hiatus, I'm back in the studio working on these videos for you guys. Just before we get started, in the last video I used a sample to kind of do a bit of wavetable synthesis for a lead pad type sound. And I've just changed it to make it a little bit more subtle, so I'm no longer playing chords and I've kind of toned it down a little bit so it's a little bit more uh, atmospheric. So this is the new sound. And I'm just going to later on in the track play chords to kind of help build up the intensity of the track. Now with this sound that we're creating today, I'm creating it to replace this tom sound that I did in an earlier video. So I'm still going to use that sound, but maybe only in intro parts or parts where I've only got percussion and then bring in this FM techno stab a bit later on. All right, so let's get started. I've just got a MIDI track here and I've just copied this MIDI pattern over to this track here. So I'm just going to solo this track and we'll put an operator on there. So operator is pretty underrated synth uh, in Ableton. You can create all sorts of sounds and it's great because it does FM, which is what we need for this particular sound. And here you've got all the different algorithms that operator can operate in, um, ranging from complete FM to subtractive. So this is this oscillator fitting into that oscillator, fitting into that oscillator, fitting into that oscillator. Whereas this one would be just your oscillators running into your filter like a standard subtractive synth. So for this particular sound, I'm going to choose this algorithm. And that just means that this oscillator is fitting into that and this is fitting into that. So it's a combination of FM and subtractive but I'm only going to be using these two oscillators. So this is quite a simple sound, but once you kind of get the basics of it, you can create your own variation of it and make it your own. So let's just get playing. Cool. So for this particular sound, I'm going to choose triangle uh, waveform. Sine waves work fantastic as well, but just to change the tonality a little bit on this, I'm using triangle waves. The next thing to do is pitch up the second oscillator an octave and we can turn up the level. So this is, this is where it will start feeding this oscillator into the other oscillator. So that's obviously quite hectic, but once we pull down the sustain, we get a pretty ravey sound. I'm also just going to bring down the peak volume of this particular envelope for this oscillator. All right, cool. Um, in FM synthesis, the kind of shape of the envelopes plays a massive part in how the sound sounds. So I'm just going to make this about 1,000 and this 1,000. So one second for the decay and release for the modulating um, oscillator and for the carrier or base oscillator, I'm just going to make that double and bring down sustain on that as well. So let's hear how that sounds. Cool. Now also picking this algorithm allows me to apply feedback so I'm going to turn up the feedback. Let's go back. So that's sounding pretty gnarly, pretty cool. Now, because I've, there's quite a lot of harmonics that are being produced there, I'm going to use the filter to kind of make it a little bit more plucky again. And I'll increase the envelopes for these as well. Now with FM synthesis in operator, the tone knob plays quite a big part in the overall sound. So turning this up 
pretty much maximizes the amount of harmonics that are being produced by the FM synthesis in operator. So tone all the way up and then tone all the way down. So basically the difference is almost, you know, having just the this carrier oscillator or having all the harmonics being generated by this oscillator fitting into that one. So I'm going to crank that all the way up. I'm going to add a little bit of spread, which just creates more of the same sound and just pans them slightly differently and detunes them slightly as well. So that's pretty much the basis of our sound. Now, to add a little bit more variation to this sound so it's not so monotonous, I'm going to add a little bit of velocity automation to the volume of oscillator B. So now, when I add a MIDI effect, a velocity MIDI effect, and I have a bit of random, and I'm just going to make sure it doesn't play too low a velocity or too high a velocity. So you can hear it's some hits it's hitting a little bit harder. And that's just to create more movement in the sounds, which you'll see is quite a big theme um, in a lot of these techno tricks. The whole point behind that is that if you've got sounds that kind of move very subtly, then someone can listen to that big loop for a lot longer because it sounds a lot more interesting. Cool, so I'm also going to play a chord with this sound as well. And I might just put this one before that. Cool, so that's sounding pretty much where we want it. So one more thing we can do before we move on from operator is adjust the phase. So you can see here in this little diagram that the waveform or oscillator is basically starting where the waveform starts. So it's starting, this would be zero in the middle here, and it's going to move up and then down and then back up. And we can change where this starts basically. So you'll hear the tonality change as I move this. So any variation of that, you know, you could create a different kind of tonality. You could even modulate that. Um, that's up to you. So I'm going to roll with that. Just adding a little bit of attack to the carrier oscillator and also the filter. And with this time parameter, this is basically kind of like a macro and this adjusts the timing of all the envelopes. So we could make it a little bit pluckier or we could use this for a build up. and have it decay or and release a little bit longer. So I'm just going to put that about there. And now let's start adding some effects. So as I mentioned in earlier videos, I sounds that are kind of static, I like to have a bit of a sweeping notch filter to just add some um, variation. Cool. And let's do some EQ.
cool. So that's all right. Just tidies up that sand a little bit. And this next thing that I'm about to add reverb um, with this kind of pre delay to get this almost like sucking back type effect. Which is really cool and works really well on this particular sound. When you've got like a big stomp and techno track, you know, just with your big fat kick and big rolling bass line. Having a stab like this, but with this kind of delayed reverb, sounds awesome. So let's just tweak this a bit. Cool. And I'll add some ping pongs. And some compression to kind of make it a little bit pluckier, but also to bring up this reverb and the kind of um, delays that decay after the sound. Yeah, I can also, um, sometimes I like to use a limiter to kind of bring up the sound even more and especially bring up these quiet parts like the reverb, which the whole uh, delayed reverb trick definitely works better when you're using, you know, a little bit more compression or limiting. Cool, and that's pretty much the basis of our sound. Let's hear that in the mix. So just for uh, Mixing purposes, I'm also going to chuck in a utility and use Ableton 10's new feature on the utility of making the low frequencies mono. Because this is playing, it's playing all the way down to below 50 hertz. I've high passed it at 50 hertz, but um, I want everything below 150 hertz to play in mono so that way uh, it plays back better on a PA system. We don't want stereo information. Uh, in the low frequencies. And I'm also going to just dial in a little bit more uh, mono information just to kind of dial back some of these effects. Beautiful. And just to finish off, I'm going to group the instrument and all the effects, and that puts it into an instrument rack, and then I can make this a macro. And then I've got a parameter right here at the start to modulate when I'm arranging my track. And that's it. 
Thanks for watching.